Before we get started, guys, I want to say a big thank you to Postmates. Uh, Postmates sponsored this video. I actually ordered Postmates today. Uh, Molly and I were really craving some, some pasta. We had some Italian delivered to the house. Everything went flawlessly. Uh, it was a fantastic service. Um, Postmates will deliver pretty much anything from around here anytime. Uh, we've used other delivery services in the past, but Postmates has more options than all the other places. It's got uh, all kinds of restaurants. It's got convenience stores. Uh, it's got uh, uh, groceries, basically anything within a certain radius of this house. And it's a pretty good radius. We can have it delivered from Postmates. Uh, I know like there was a Best Buy on the list, which caught me off guard. I actually didn't know that Postmates delivered more than just food. So if I'm getting ready to do a stream or record a video like this one, and uh, I, I need a new cable, which has happened in the past, Instead of having to run out and get it, I can have it delivered to the house. So if I know I need something to record a video or stream for tomorrow, it can be delivered right when I need it while I'm setting everything else up. It's fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and look at some uh, some talking points here. So I'm going to let you know what Postmates has let me know uh, because I don't want to mess any of this up. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So each and every 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. I think that's how many there are. Postmates will bring you what you need within the hour. Um, it, it tells me, so whenever we, we ordered our food earlier, it told me it was going to be an hour. It actually got there like 10, 15 minutes faster than that. So I think they give you that hour time frame to wait. And then, you know, if, if the restaurant's on the ball, like I guess the ours was today, we got that food right away. It was fresh. It was hot. It was delicious. Um, no more trips to the store. Uh, you don't have to know where the store is. Uh, there were some places, some restaurants, and some uh, uh, other businesses on the list that I didn't even recognize. So, Maul and I found some, like, Thai cuisine we want to try, a couple of the restaurants that were on the list. I don't know where they are. I'll have to look that up and find where they are. But we're going to try some new restaurants we didn't even know were in the area. Postmates will deliver that as well. You guys can download the app on iOS or Android for free. Uh, browse local restaurants, businesses, track your delivery in real time. Uh, it, it fast. It was easy. It was very simple. Uh, whenever we were done, it was easy to go back and leave a tip, leave a rating, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Very simple. Um, everyone that's younger than me, which is basically all of you, will have no issues. And everyone older than me, you could figure it out. It wasn't that complicated. It was, boom, open the app, scroll, select the restaurant, order my food, groceries, what have you. Press done or whatever. Click on the little button at the bottom that says you're done ordering. Uh, and then, boom, it was shipped. That uh, was that easy. Here's the good part for you guys. So again, thank you to Postmates for sponsoring this, but it doesn't just end with me being sponsored. There's something in it for you all as well. For a limited time, and I apologize, I am reading because I want, like I said, I don't want to make, mess this up. Pay, pay attention here. Pay attention here. If, you, if, you, if you're like me and you like to have stuff delivered to the house, for a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners, you guys, $100 of free delivery credit for the first seven days. Uh, to start your free deliveries, download the app, Postmates, and use the code, watch this, seven, seven, seven. It was kind of off-centered. I, I, I kind of started in the middle, which was seven, seven, seven. The code is seven, seven, seven. Me, Min Lord Minion, seven, 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 Minion, seven, seven. Seven, seven, seven is your code. It's code seven, seven, seven for a hundred dollars of free delivery credit for your first seven days. You see the theme here? <laughs> when you download the Postmates app. Uh, anything you need, anytime you need it, Postmate it, download Postmates, and save by using the code 777 $100. That is not nothing. That is a significant amount of delivery. Uh, so please, guys, give it a look. Check out Postmates uh, for groceries, for restaurants, convenience stores, traditional retailers, you name it. They are on the app. Take a look. Download the app today, again, on the iOS or Android for free. I use code 777. Thank you all so much. And a big thank you to Postmates. Hey, guys. I figured it was time that we talk about just life, you know? Uh, I, I like doing these vlogs. I don't do them very often. But I do like to do them. And I was going through fan mail um, that you guys have sent uh, to the P.O. Box. The P.O. Box is still open, by the way, if you guys want to send stuff. We haven't been doing the videos. Just because um, we moved a little while ago. But prior to moving into this new house, which has treated us very well, minus the poltergeist and broken pipes and broken AC unit and everything about it. Um, but our old house was very kind of very small comparatively. Um, this is not like a mansion by any means or anything, but it, it has more space. We had uh, 
like one bathroom, no storage rooms, very tiny rooms in our old house. When we had guests over. We had like an air mattress in the living room that everyone slept on. It was just a very tight space. And uh, I never want to throw away stuff that you guys send me and it was getting to be too much. Um, so that's why we quite quit doing videos on it, but I still want to let you all know it's open. You're welcome to send uh, fan mail, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you guys like to the, the post office, uh, PO box. I, I would like to put the caveat that please send stuff only for Molly or myself. Uh, I don't really want to be passing stuff on to Mark, John, or Ethan, or Tyler, or Bob, or Pat, or Gar, or JP, or D-Life, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the PO box is for Molly or myself. If you send stuff for other people, it's highly doubtful it's ever going to get to them. It will probably be added to our collection of things uh, just because I don't want to be a stepping stone to get to somebody else. So but the PO box is open. You can find it on the about page on YouTube. Uh, so check it out if you guys still want to send stuff. But long story short, I was going through um, some letters today. A um, couple new ones, a couple old ones. Uh, and I came across one that was talking to me about some real heavy life stuff, right? So uh, the theme of this, this vlog, I think, is overcoming adversity. Uh, which sounds like a, a, a school talk or some kind of pep talk or whatever. But honestly, it's something that I think we all just need to, to think about. To, to understand that we've done it, right? We've all had things in our lives that have happened that suck. Um, specifically, this letter I was reading was talking about how to survive being the child of a divorce. And um, I can and can't relate to that. Because my parents weren't married when they separated. So it wasn't technically a divorce, it was a separation. And you guys might be like, what's well, the same thing, Wade? It is, it is, but it's not. There's not the same legal battle that there is in a divorce. There's no legal rights from one person to take half of the other, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think a separation's a little bit less potentially nasty. Not le not It's not not nasty, but it's not as legally messy on top of everything else. So. From my perspective, I know this is very heavy stuff, guys. Uh, and if there are things, uh, if you are triggered by events, tough life events like that, uh, I, I apologize for not saying this beforehand, but please, you know, don't watch this. That's going to upset you. Um, but it's something I think that we should talk about because it's something that I don't talk about very much. And it's not because I'm ashamed of my past or anything. It's just like one of those things where I like to entertain and be happy, full of life. But this year has really been tough. It's been tough financially. It's been tough emotionally, stress-wise. The house has just honestly devastated Molly and I. Uh, YouTube uh, hasn't really been generating as much as it used to, um, the way that things are. And uh, it's been a tough year because we've had to pay for a lot of things that we can't really afford. We had the wedding last year. We got the house. And honestly, a down payment on a house and a wedding I finished paying off my car, my college student loans. I got those debts out of the way. Um, but even without that, it's been like, it's been challenging. It's been challenging. So overcoming adversity is something that we all do. We all have to experience life in different ways, right? We don't all ride the same train. Um, even though people say we start in the same place, end in the same place, whatever. Have you. But your life experiences are different than even your sibling, best friends, cousins, your friends, me, uh, and everyone else out there watching. Everyone has a unique experience. In a lot of us go through, you know, our parents separating, divorcing, what have you. Um, a lot of us go through siblings that drive us nuts or make bad choices. Sometimes we're the ones that make bad choices. Um, family is great. Family is also one of the biggest stressors in life. Um, School is stressful, work is stressful, money is stressful. There's so much crap that we have to overcome. So let's just go through a little bit of it. As far as my parents separating, when I was four, I believe I was four years old, my parents separated. Um, sometimes I, I feel like I remember it very vividly, but I also don't fully trust memories from when I was four. But from my recollection, um, I believe it was a morning. And I believe my dad was walking out of the house. I, I picture a suitcase, or a, 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 like a, I guess it is a suitcase, luggage, um, a briefcase. Briefcase is the word I'm looking for. Like, a, like going to the office, briefcase, or I've got the money handcuffed to my wrist, briefcase. Uh, I picture him walking out the door with a, like a briefcase. And I 
In my mind, I scream, Daddy, don't go, as he walked out the door, and then I just start bawling. And that's all I remember of the event. Um, I don't remember what it was like just before. I don't remember what it was like just after. That is my memory. That's my vivid memory that may or may not be actually true, but that's what I remember. Um, and it was tough. I, I remember the toughest thing I remember about my parents' separation wasn't that moment. Uh, it was... It was both of them and my grandparents all trying to not put pressure on me and therefore they did put pressure on me and i'll explain the hardest part of dealing with that was like hey do you want to come over to your dad's do you want to go over to your dad's this weekend do you want to stay here do you want to go to your grandparents no one's pressuring you on what to do you just go where you want to go um and everyone always seems so happy like my grandparents loved it when i came over my dad loved to see me. mom loved to see me and what that told me was that whoever I chose to stay with, that means I was letting the other two down. And that's how I approached it for a long time. As a kid, that was a, was a heavy thing, a heavy burden. And it was a hard burden because every weekend that I didn't go to my dad's, I felt bad. If I did go to my dad's, I felt bad I wasn't with my mom or my grandparents. If I went to my grandparents, like, I just always felt like whoever I wasn't with was very sad without me. Honestly, they're probably having a, a, bit, a bit of a break, not, being, not having to worry about a little kid for a while, but um, it, it was really, really hard on me at that age to make those decisions on who, who am I going to spend time with this weekend? Uh, because for some reason in my weird kid brain, it wasn't who was I going to spend time with. It was who are the two whose feelings are going to be hurt when I don't choose them. Um, I hated it. I absolutely hated that. And uh, so... I mean, as far as overcoming, it's just like, what choice do we have, right? Like, I had to keep existing, you know? Uh, I don't, there's no other option in my mind. Um, so I toughed it out. I made the best decision I could. I tried to balance it out the best I could. Um, I remember my parents arguing a lot, fighting. I remember them arguing over, I remember some of the things, I don't want to get too personal here, but I remember a lot of the topics they argued about. Um, and I tried, I tried to help as a kid. It's like, what can you do? I tried to be like, you know, dad, don't get so upset about that. Can we just do this instead or whatever. And like, mom, please just understand this and that. Like I was very mature for a kid. Not every kid is me. Some kids handle a lot better than I did, but I'm sure. Um, but I, I know I handled things pretty well as far as I'm aware. Um, I had a lot of, it's going to sound weird too. Um, I had some bad influences in life at a young age, but those bad influences didn't influence me to do bad things. They showed me otherwise. Like I constantly saw these influences getting into trouble, uh, angering people, causing issues, causing friction. And I so badly never wanted to be them because I hated the pain that they caused. I hated seeing my mom cry, dad cry, my grandparents get upset. It, it really bothered me. I was a very, very empathetic child, and I there was nothing I hated more than seeing my family hurt. So I tried very hard to be the opposite. And I think that's where a lot of my moral code came from, was in those early days, seeing, seeing so much pain, feeling it myself, and not wanting to let people down. Like Even now, to this day, I think like part of my job entertaining, it's like, financially, I'm not doing the worst in the world, but we're not doing well. You know, we're not we're not making anything right now. We're we're living, we're getting by. And the house has honestly just been devastating. Um but we're existing. Uh entertainer wise, I never want to stop streaming, making YouTube videos, um, going the podcast. If we ever talk about doing another tour or anything like that, like I always want to be here for all of you guys, um, because you guys have given Molly and myself everything. My whole life was handed to me from you all. You guys giving me the time of day, watching my stupid videos, watching my streams, uh, supporting Molly and myself. I met my wife because of Drunk Minecraft and you guys being fans of all that. I. <laughs> I got to propose on a stage in Seattle in front of thousands of you guys. Uh, love of my life. I got to post a video online of our wedding day. Uh, so many friendships, my career. 
so much happiness in the last seven years has been because you guys watch me. And if I ever have to get another job, I hope I can still do this at least as a hobby or still part time. Um, because I don't want to let you guys down. And that's the trait I developed at a young age. I don't want to let people down. I didn't want to let my family down. I don't want to let my friends down. I don't want to let you guys down. And I have failed. Not necessarily with you guys, but I have failed in the past. I've I've made mistakes. We all do, right? Everyone makes mistakes. But I've done my best. And I, I think young Wade, little four-year-old Wade, five, six-year-old Wade, trying to make the most of a bad situation, make as many people happy as possible whenever I felt like I, no matter what I did, I was failing. I still tried. And I think that the biggest lesson I'm so far in here, I don't even gotten to point one here. I ramble. Uh, but the first thing is we got to try in order to overcome adversity, our obstacles, we have to keep trying. Even my dad passed away when I was 11 years old. That's seven years of trying and feeling like I was failing constantly. When my dad passed away, I blame myself. Long story short, my dad, uh, esophagus erupted. He internally bled to death. Um, and I was there a good portion of it. I know what that was like. I know what it looked like. I know what taking care of him. And, you know, that's, that's something I always remember. But my grandma was, on, she was gone on vacation and when she got back and her, her firstborn baby boy was dead, dad, she was so and she never got to say goodbye and if i hadn't realized he was dying rather than just going back to my mom's house and saying bye to him if i'd i, I never called 911 if i had my grandma might have gotten to say would they have saved him probably not would they made him less painful for him perhaps would they have Giving him a little bit more time so my grandma might have been able to say goodbye. Hard to say, but at 11 years old, I 100% put that blame on my shoulders. Uh, and that was the first year I ever got straight A's in school that following year because my grandparents, I knew they were always happy when I got good grades. So I tried for them, not for myself. I tried for them. Uh, I wanted them to be happy about something, and I took away their firstborn son by not calling 911. Now, this is not how I feel now. I want to make that 100% clear. I do not blame myself. Now, as an adult, looking back, I was a kid. What kid has ever gone through that and knows what's happening? None. So, 11-year-old Wade was fine. He did his best. But at the time, this is me in that, in that time frame. It was my fault in my brain. That's what I thought. And so, I tried to make up for my mistake by being a better grandson, by being a good student, by making them proud of something, you know? making up for what I consider my own failure. Um, so I started getting good grades. And I think so much of my ability to overcome adversity was the fact that I cared so much about the people around me in my life. Uh, a lot more than I ever cared about myself. Now, I, I am a selfish son of a bitch. I will tell you that right now. If I'm hungry, I want to eat now. If I'm craving this, I want that. Uh, if I don't want to go anywhere, I don't want to go anywhere. If I'm going to be lazy, I'm going to be lazy. Like I, I, We are all selfish people deep down. We all are. But I do have a lot of empathy, and despite the fact that in my brain I might be mumbling and grumbling whenever Molly asks me to take out the garbage, I'll do it. Because she does so much around here, she puts up with my crap so much that the least I can do is help her. Now, is part of me still always fighting it and wanting to be lazy and not do anything? Yes. But uh, as a kid especially, I, f I still have a ton of empathy, but I think young me was overly empathetic. Like, I don't think I worried about me enough growing up. I never thought about what do I want to do when I grow up? What do I want to be? I thought about what can I be that will help make a lot of money to take care of my family? I want to be a lawyer. Uh, why? It makes a lot of money and I like watching Law and Order. Those are my reasons. Um, but my empathy did help me at least be a good son, be a good student, be a good grandson hopefully be a good friend boyfriend etc some of my exes probably would tell you otherwise and some of my friends would probably tell you i messed up a lot too because i spent too much time with my exes uh, but i think crying and thinking about those around you that's lesson two those are the couple things lesson two 
this is a very roundabout way of going about this. Um, but when you're going through a hard time, yes, it's hard on you, but it's also hard on the other person. Molly and I are going through a lot this year, but she and I are having zero issues with each other because she and I are very good about thinking about the other person. Um, just tonight, she was like, hey, uh, I want to do this. Uh, my friends want to do this, but if you need me, I want to be there for you first and foremost. Do you want to do this? Uh, we were going to watch Stranger Things season three. We we're going to try to finish the season, but uh, I told her I wanted to come record this and talk to you guys, and I wanted to let her go do her thing. Um, but it's like, we've both been so stressed out. There's no AC in the house. We're burning up. But we still think about the other person. And even though our inclinations are to go do our own thing, the first thing we want to do is make sure the other person is okay. Whenever you're going through adversity, think about the other people that are involved and think about where they're coming from too. Like whether or not they're on the same side as you or if you're opposed with them, whatever it may be, everyone is a person, right? Everyone in the world wants food, they want sleep, they want comfort, they want to be financially comfortable or then some, whatever. Uh, they want to find love. Uh, they want to be loved. You know, to some extent, not everyone wants marriage, kids, etc., etc. But everyone wants the same basics in life, and we have to start relating there because there's so much division among people in the world that we have to start looking at what we have in common and building from there rather than tearing each other down for our differences. Um, so when you're going through something, let's say you're going through your parents separate, and it's all your dad's fault. He did everything wrong. Your dad is still your dad. And there, there are exceptions to that. Like, you know, let's say, let's say it's not one of those, like, pretend he doesn't exist type of situation, right? Let's just say uh, he put work first. You know, he was working too hard to try to take care of the family and was never there. And it caused separation. Something like that. Not something like unforgivable that he did. Okay. So let's say it's something where he was trying his best but it wasn't lining up with what the family actually needed. They're talking past each other, bad communication, whatever it is, something along those lines, you know, it's easy to get upset with him, right? Or your mom or whoever's, whoever you want to blame for it. But assuming it's not something unforgivable that they did, it's important to try to understand. My dad, for example, his vice was alcohol. And whenever he wasn't drinking, my dad was one of the nicest, funniest, sweetest dads out there. Uh, one of the best guys around. But alcohol changed him. He was drunk. He was not the same person. And for the longest time, I was so angry at him. In some ways, I probably still am. Uh, because my mom told him, if you're going to keep drinking, you're going to have to go. And he kept drinking. So he followed through and... That's why my parents separated. And ultimately, that's the, that was the cause of my dad's death. Uh, tequila wore away his esophagus. Age of 39, my dad was tequila, drinking tequila. And um, I was so angry. But as an adult, I've tried to look at him and understand, one, addiction. Addiction is a real thing. It's a problem. And I, I wish I could say my dad was the only person in my family who's been battling addiction, but he's not. Um, thankfully, Molly nor myself have ever personally dealt with that. So it's not us, but I do have family, friends, etc., whatever, that are dealing with that. And he wanted nothing more than for my, my mom to take him back and be whole family again. But what I couldn't understand as a kid is how he could still choose to drink whenever he knew that all he had to do to stop, to get everything back, was to stop. So, trying to understand that addiction and how powerful it was, something I've tried to do. Try to relate to the sadness, pain he felt. I'm sure the drinking increased whenever, you know, he realized he wasn't going to get us all back like that. Um, my mom started dating a guy at one point. It was one of the later years of my dad's life. And I think that that sent him in a much deeper rut. I think that was the realization that that relationship was never going to come back. 
and that might even, I, 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 I don't blame my mom, obviously, for this. Um, or my dad, really, I, I do, but I don't. It's just, I try, I try to understand and relate and forgive. Uh, I wish I had my dad. I really do. For a lot of you guys have dealt with loss, whether it's separation, death, what have you. But be empathetic. Try to understand each person's perspective, why it's happening the best you can. As a kid, you can't. But when you look back on it, try to understand. Try to move past it. Realize that I'm 30 years old. My dad, I think, was 28 years old when I was born. I cannot imagine having a two-year-old kid right now. I can't. My dad had already been a parent for two years. And I know a lot of my friends, family members that have kids already, but like for me personally, that's a scary thought. Uh, we, we are just us. There's never a day where we become like the adult or the person who's ready for this responsibility. It's like, you have a kid, it's there. You could have read books on it. You could have tried to study out, prepare yourself the best you can. But ultimately, you don't know who that kid's going to be. You know, not every kid is going to be the same. My siblings, each one of my siblings is a very, very unique personality. Uh, myself included. We all are very different. All pretty much raised by my mom. Um, I had a lot of influence from other relatives, grandparents, that are growing up not but like we all can turn out different we, we gotta none of us are really prepared for that um but we gotta keep trying we gotta be empathetic we gotta think about everyone that's involved uh what else overcoming adversity in general it's, it's such a hard topic i keep going on to my own personal vendettas here i'm sorry for that i i don't know how to how to relate to topics without relating to the topic caused friction in the past. I've actually had friendships basically end because of the fact that I relate a lot of stories to things I've gone through, my own experiences. Um, but if you think of everyone else involved, that'll help you realize how important you are. And you are important. You are vitally important. Yourself, family, your friends, me. If you're watching this video, you're important to me. You know, you are a, a viewer of mine. You are someone who takes time out of their day to watch my stupid face Hear my stupid voice ramble for 30 minutes make two little points um and, and it's important you realize that we're important it's important that you keep trying it's important that even if you can't make sense of something there are things that happen that just don't make sense. um i had i had a low point today i i feel i feel embarrassed sharing this story um the ac unit has me so won't torn up right now. Our, we still have a hole in our ceiling. Our front door is still blown off. Our, everything is in such a temple and I can't afford to fix it all and I don't want to put Molly under stress. Any more stress. And I, I just... It keeps happening. No matter what I try to do, I try to fix things the right way. I try not to put duct tape. I try to get things fixed the right way. So that way it doesn't happen again. That way if we sell the house, whoever moves here next... Like, I, I try to think of other people and do it the right way. It's like one of those last guy, the night good guy finishes last things. That's like that, that, I had that feeling today. I was driving uh, back my my our, Molly and my pups, Ginger and Preston, were over at my mom's house to get out of the house during the heat wave. Um, we thought that at least they should get out of here and not be laying around panting. So I went to go pick them up today. The weather's cooled down a little bit, and on the way home, uh, I was driving and I was just in my own head, uh, so upset, thinking about all the crap. Focusing on the road first and foremost, I am a good driver, for the record. Um, but while driving, I was going through some of the stuff in my head about the events that have happened. And a semi in front of me kicked up a rock that hit my windshield and left like a nice little scratch or a little uh, dent or what? Not a dent, crack, whatever. Not like a full crack, but like a little, just a little like white mark. And I don't know. I didn't even try to rub the thing off to see if it's just a mark or if it actually cracked the windshield, whatever. Chipped it. Chip, chip is the word I was looking for. And I just lost it. I started screaming in the car. I was just, I, I'm not a religious, super religious person or anything. I don't know what, I honestly don't know what I believe. If I'm being 100% honest, here. I don't know what I believe. I don't want to get religious on you. But 
to no one. I looked up at the, the, the sky through the windshield and I just said, why? What? What else? What else are you going to throw at me? What am I paying for? What did I do? It was just such a pathetic scene. My poor dogs were sitting there like looking up, scared as I just screamed at the sky. It was just, it was just a bottom. I was not, not the rockiest of rock bottoms I've ever hit, but it was a rock bottom. First one I've hit in a while where I was just so overwhelmed and emotional that I, I just lost it. And I, I, I was very embarrassed at the, at the moment after it happened. I got home and I tried to give the pups lots of love and attention to apologize for it. Um, I, I hit that breaking point. And, you know, then we, we did a, a stream earlier. I'm, I'm dating this episode, fairly obviously, but uh, we, we streamed Rock, streamed Rocket League with JP afterward. Um, it felt a lot better after streaming. You guys, a lot of you guys, I'm sure, were there watching the stream. Made me feel a lot better. And I went to talk to Molly and told her I was okay. Told her about the event. Because I tell her, we talk about everything. Um, and it's just like, even now going through this, I took a step back after, after my emotions cooled, after my outburst, my emotions cooled. I took a step back and I thought about it. The house is having some issues. Financially, we're struggling, but I'm with the love of my life. We have two wonderful dogs, sweet dogs that have been handling their newfound freedom. Cause we're not, we're not locking them up in the crate so much now that they're over a year old. We're letting them have more freedom in the house whenever Molly and I are either leaving or uh, going up and downstairs to work. Um, and they've not had any accidents. They've been very good. Peter is, is the best cat I've ever met in my entire life. He's a little shithead sometimes, but he is such a sweet boy. He loves attention, loves affection. He, yell, he runs around the house yelling mom, trying to get Molly to feed him and stuff. I, I, I love my family. I love my career. I love all of you guys. Everything we've shared over the years. I've got some of the best friends in the entire planet. I've gotten to experience so many great things. It's just, I, I needed to take a step back and think about the positives in life. It's so easy to get caught up in the negatives and let it overwhelm you. That you overlook that positive, right? You had a nice dinner, so what? Life sucks. Well, you got to go see this movie, so what? Life sucks. Uh, your best friend is coming over, so what? Life sucks. It's so easy to so what? Or to just ignore the good and just focus on the bad and say, but I'm still dealing with. And I've been doing that. I have been doing that for a while. And today I took a step back and I just thought about all of the good things we've got going on and how minor this is. Has it been stressful? Yes. Has it been stressful for months and months? Yes. But we're healthy, you know? Other than a little pinch nerve in my neck, we're healthy. We're not dealing with anything major health-wise. Our animals are doing well. We're married, we're happy. We have the best jobs in the entire world. Some of the best friends, like so much in our life is so good right now that I am embarrassed that I have let this minor house crap get me so far down. And it's just like slowly over time, a little bonk on the head, little bonk on the head, little bonk on the head, little bonk. And eventually I've just buried myself underground. And I just take a step back, take a step back. Think about all the good things. Think about all the potential on the horizon. Think about how much stronger some of the crap that you've already been through has made you. Losing my dad and my grandpa three months later, walking into my grandma's hospital room with a get well soon card as the doctor tells her terminally ill has a couple months to live. I went into a, a, a real depression for about three to four years after my grandma. I started developing migraine headaches due to the stress of losing. My grandma was as big a part of my world as anyone is or ever has been. And losing her destroyed me for a long time. It was so hard to pick up the pieces. My family and I still have a hard time even talking about her without crying. But I survived that. Five, growing up in a one parent household. I've survived all the crap my siblings have put me through and I've put them through. I've survived breakups, both ones that I've done and that have been done to me. I've survived bad friendships, good friendships. 
I've survived financial stress. I've survived financial success and stress again. You have survived more than you know. You've dealt with more than you. And if you're focusing on all the stuff you've dealt with all the time, then think about it this way. You are still here. You're still fighting. And there are moments, even in the thickest of crap, there are still moments of reprieve. There's a moment where you might laugh or uh, smile or just kick back, relax, or enjoy a bite of food. There's so many wonderful things we get to experience and it's so easy to overlook them. One of the best qualities Molly has, and she has many, is that she appreciates beautiful sights. She takes pictures of flowers, of clouds, of sunsets. She makes me notice things that I wouldn't normally notice. Constellations, lightning strikes. There's just so many things that I wouldn't normally pay attention to. But I see her pull out her phone and aim it up at the sky and I look up and I see a, a, a beautiful cloud. Normally I'm like, cloud, oh, whatever. But whenever she looks at it, there's something more special out there than I appreciate. I appreciate the fact that I get to look at the night sky and either see the clouds or the moon, or the stars, uh, the breeze pushing the leaves of the trees. Taking that moment to not only just reflect on the fact that I've survived a bunch of crap, but also to appreciate what I've all got going for me is important. And I think these are all important things that you guys should think about too. Um, I don't know everything you've been through. Um, again, I'm speaking from my own personal experience. I'm one person sitting here. There's many of you guys watching and each one of you has gone through a unique path in life. You've experienced things I never have and never will. Uh, but the same is true the other way around. Some good, some bad. So you may have a different take on all of this and that's perfectly fine. I'm not saying I'm right about this. This is just my personal advice from my personal experience. Um, just keep trying don't ever stop that because statistically it's got to get better right the odds have to be in the favor of getting better even if it's been years of suffering three years four years of depression after my grandma died migraine headaches every week I don't have migraines anymore I did for years and years Probably for eight to ten years after my grandma passed, I battled migraine. I've not had one. Knock on the uh, linoleum? I don't know what this material is. Knock on whatever this desk is. Uh, I've not had them in a long time. Um, growing up without a dad, Father's Day still is awkward. Um, survived it. So keep trying, and eventually things get a little bit. And life will keep throwing crap at us till the day we die. Life is just that way. Life is like force in Star Wars. It's all about balance. We have moments of greatness and we have horrible moments happen. We experience amazing things in life. and We experience horrors that no one ever should. Um, our friends, our family, they go through horrible things, but they also have great things happen to them too. Some more than others, but there's always those moments where we get to the peak, top of the roller coaster, and life is fantastic. A couple years ago, whenever we started doing the, when Mark, Bob, Tyler, and Ethan, and I started doing the You're Welcome, I remember the first time we walked out on a stage for the actual show, and we were behind the curtain, and we were all so nervous. And we went out there and we put on a show uh, down in Texas. And after the show was over and everyone cheered, applauded, we did our little Q&A encore talk and everyone was so happy. And we walked off that stage and we were so happy. It was such a euphoric moment that we did that. In front of so many of you guys, we got to go out there, be our stupid selves, do improv, whatever. Some of the best friends I've ever had in this world. I had to go out there and that moment will always be so special. The end of the last tour will also just... all of it was. Um, but it was such a peak, huge peak 
I get to say, I am here experiencing this love of my best friend. The love of my life. My fans. I've got fans. I've got people who enjoy my stupid content. Like, those are things that are so easy to take for granted sometimes. And we just have to remind ourselves not. There's too many great things in this world to take them all for granted. And I think that that's, that's very important. So to wrap all this up, guys, I'm so sorry for rambling for, for so long. Um, I repeated myself a lot. Please keep trying. Think about everyone involved, yourself, how you feel, everyone else, how they feel. Try to relate, try to understand. And even if you don't agree with all sides, at least try to get an idea of where they're coming from or why it happened. Um, whether it's dealing with someone passing away, whether it's dealing with a family separating, a breakup, getting a bad score on a homework assignment, like, whatever it is, the big or small, things affect us differently. And just know that it's okay. It's okay to get emotional sometimes, to hurt. But if you hurt someone else in return, apologize, make up, think about them. Um, keep trying, keep battling. What else? I had other points. One of my other points were, Dana, if you remember, put them up. Uh, I'm too hot, stupid to remember all of my stuff because I've been rambling for so long. But it's important to me that you guys focus. Focus on the now, the here, the good things. Think about all that you have going for you. Um, good experiences in life. But it's, it's so important to me that you guys take care of yourself. Um, my dumb videos might put a smile on your face for the 10 minutes or 45 <laughs> minutes that I ramble on. Um, but it's important that the other 23 hours of the day that you guys are enjoying your life. And I can't individually affect all of them as much as I wish I could. But take care of yourself. You matter to so many people. Family, friends, me. Uh, even if I've never met you, even if I've never read one of your comments, if you never commented on a video, if you've never tweeted at me, even if we've had no direct interaction, the fact that you've taken your time out of your day to watch this video, to get to this far into this video, means so much to me. You guys, I wish I knew how to explain how much you guys have given me. My entire adult life has basically revolved around entertaining you guys and the career and life I've gotten as a return. I never want to ask you guys for a dime, a penny, for myself. I always appreciate it whenever you guys do support me. Or the charity cut cases, uh, charity, uh, charity um, causes. Um, Charity case. <laughs> I feel like a charity case right now with the stupid house stuff. Uh, the charity causes that we've done. Um, I, I do always appreciate that, but more than anything, I appreciate you guys just being loyal viewers and sticking with me through good times, bad times. Whether you're new to the channel or you've been here since 2012, I just want you to know I appreciate each and every one of you more than you'll ever know. You're all so important. Everything, everything I've been through and shared with you guys, I feel like we've kind of Experience together and I thank you guys for everything. Uh, big, big thank you to Dana for editing this, all of my videos, dealing with all my crap. And of course, thank you to Postmates for sponsoring this video. Again, if you guys download Postmates, the app on your phone, hit the app, use code 777, get $100 off for the first seven days. $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. $100 free delivery credit first seven days. Do it. Do it. Worth it. Thank you guys so much. Um, let me know what you think about, you know, this style of video. Just me talking to you guys about crap or hopefully not 48, 50 minutes in the future, but whatever it may be. Um, thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for whatever comes next. Until next time. See you guys.